Hey guys, how are you? I'm, I'm back with a new book. So, uh, before we get started with that though, um, I just want you to all remember there is our shop. If you want to support us, we have books, we have writing services, and on our Redbubble shop, we have a whole load of really cool and funky things and you know check it out also if you enjoy our stuff please like subscribe share it with friends leave a comment we love seeing comments love talking to people so yeah if if that moves you whatever your vibe is man so talking about vibes boy we have something this week we are talking about the little yellow book the little yellow book we're talking about yoko ono's book grapefruit from well initially from 1964 or this is the 1971 reprint that was done though this one isn't a 1971 copy this is the current incarnation of grapefruit the little yellow book by yoko ono so where do we start yoko ono who is probably the world's most famous unknown artist how does how do most people find yoko ono well, they find Yoko Ono via her third husband, John Lennon, via the Beatles. Most people who know Yoko know her because they started out as Beatles fans and she's part of the story. Whether she likes it or not, whether it's intentional or not, it is almost impossible to talk about Yoko Ono without mentioning her third and final husband because she hasn't remarried. Yoko Ono is currently 90 years old. She was born in 1933 in Tokyo. She is the daughter of very well-to-do parents, very well-connected parents, her father especially, um, who was a banker. And she has lived because of her father's work between her childhood was spent between San Francisco, New York and Japan. So she lived a life between two worlds. She was also a child who lived through um, the Second World War in Japan. So she is, unlike most of the war baby 60s rock musicians who were born during the Second World War, she was a child in war. She understood what it was like to be one of those civilian civilians unarmed civilians children who, whose whole world is changing and dangerous around them and having the powerlessness of a child so that has significantly informed her um her her outlook and her actions in the world so um as a as a young woman she her family had moved to new york and she became involved in fluxus which was the new york avant-garde very edge um art scene at that time so this was a major art movement but not in terms of it was at the edge and then it was then other people borrowed from that and made more commercially accessible works 
grapefruit dates from this time. Now, this is not the like what the original grapefruit was. The original grapefruit was published um, in a run of 500 copies. It was a very cheap self-published piece and it, uh, it, it, it was printed in Japan when she and her then husband Tony Cox were living in Japan and it, she took it with her when they returned to New York. So it was an obscure conceptual art book. The 1971 edition, which this is a reproduction of, a second printing of, is an expanded edition. This has all the original grapefruit material plus more that was done subsequently. So it is an expanded edition. This one also has an introduction uh, as the 71 one did by John Lennon, who is the reason why this obscure book by an extraordinarily obscure artist was picked up by a major publishing house. Okay. Yoko Ono is an artist. Yoko Ono is actually an incredibly um, well-trained, very intelligent, very shrewd business person. But her third husband's celebrity meant that she is known by far, far more people than she would ever have garnered attention from. Um, so I think anybody who has um, heard knows anything of the Beatles, understands the, knows the uh, story of John and Yoko meeting at the Indica Gallery where she had been invited to exhibit her work. In fact, Pete Townsend talks about, ha, ha, actually mentions that she had visited the art college when he was there. He, when, um, he talks about that on the audio commentary of the Rock and Roll Circus, the Rolling Stones Rock and Roll Circus, which they, um, the, both The Who and John and Yoko both appear on. Um, and he talks about the fact that he had seen her stuff. So she wasn't, whereas for most of the people, she was an entirely unknown quantity. She was there because of John. Uh, Pete actually knew who she was, but she was known in a very, very small circle. Part of the thing with Yoko is she's Japanese. I know that sounds really, really obvious, but understanding her work means to understand what her influences are. So what is this book. It is, she's a conceptual artist, but this book isn't just a collection of ideas in terms of conceptual art. They are conceptual art filtered through her lens and her lens is Japanese. So for instance, these are all ideas for artworks. Fog piece one. Think of what the next person is thinking. Fog piece two. Polish an orange. Fog piece three. Send a fog to your friend. 1964 spring. Name piece. Change your name by the period of your age, by the year, by the day, by occasions, by the color of your dress, 1964, spring. That's the nature of these. They're not, these are not practical things. There are some things that you could do. Um, for instance, map piece, 
draw a map to get lost. Uh, mask piece. Make a mask larger than your face. Polish the mask every day. In the morning, wash the mask instead of your face. When somebody wants to kiss you, let the person kiss the mask instead. 1961, winter. They're all like that. But they're not just imagine this and, and, and whatever batty thing. That, a, lot of, a lot of people will talk about Yoko, Yoko Ono in a way as it's batty, it's weird, it's strange, because they are coming from a Western art mindset. Each one of these is more like a Zen Buddhist koan. Those paradoxical riddles that are used within Zen Buddhism to help train out of the analytical mind. They have a tradition inside Japanese culture. In fact, that mask piece seems particularly um, particularly prescient for anybody who is living within a culture or a worldview that is not natural or native to them. How many of us in our everyday lives wear a mask? How many of us put on a performance? How many of us find ourselves trapped in a performative image of ourselves that we then have trouble taking off? that doesn't reflect an authenticity. Um, looking at, if you look at um, things created by the neurodivergent, especially the autistic community, masking is actually a thing done very, um, very with, with great awareness by autistic people to make non-autistic people feel more comfortable to to fit in and it causes enormous psychic damage how much did the young yoko ono have to mask in america yoko ono when she speaks english is not speaking although she speaks english fluently having spent many years in, of her childhood and young adulthood and subsequent adulthood in America speaking English. She speaks fluent English, fully accented, but fluent English. How much did that identity conflict with her Japanese identity? How much did that English, does that English-speaking mask conflict with her Japanese-ness. And that actually brings us to the title of the, of the book, Grapefruit. A grapefruit is a hybrid. It, it's not a naturally occurring thing. It is a hybrid of the palmello, which is an Asian fruit, Asian, Asian citrus fruit and a sweet orange. It's a hybrid. Yoko Ono chose that because it reflected the Eastern and Western aspects of her life. This hybrid position. In fact, while there are in, in, in the West, in, in, the, in America, in England, she was othered significantly, has been significantly other, othered over the decades for being Japanese, for being too foreign, for being not like them. In Japan, people will criticize her for not being Japanese enough, for being too Western. So the paradox, she is a paradox in her own life. The art pieces are paradoxes 
um, approaching, and this, this is what you have to realize when you approach Yoko Ono's work. And this is something that I think is very easy to overlook because Yoko Ono's Japanese is not the Western consumer friendly Japanese of Ghibli movies or anime. It's not the made for easy consumption Japanese. She sing, when she sings, she is using Japanese culture that is inherently Japanese. It is not made for external consumption. You go into listening to Koto music or listening to things that use the pentatonic scale, they sound very, very different to Western ears that are used to the diatonic scale. So the white keys versus the black keys on a piano. It's a different musical scale. So when, so you take somebody who actually is quite well trained in Western music, but also comes from a Japanese culture because her sing screaming, you can't do that without training. You scream for five minutes and see how long that lasts. It's, it's no different in terms of training to what an opera singer can do. But it is very much from a completely different context and a completely different um, worldview. So this accounts for a lot of people's um, confusion and difficulty to even begin to grasp where do you start with Yoko Ono? Well, you start with the fact that she is a, 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 a woman of two worlds. She is a woman of two worlds and you need to understand not just her Western identity, but also her Japanese identity to begin to approach this. Now, one thing that is not in this book, because it was subsequent to this, but it is within her conceptual art pieces is the 1971 billboards, which have enormous resonance now as we, just as they had in the, in the early 1970s when the war was Vietnam and John and Yoko took out billboard space saying, war is over if you want it. Yoko Ono, since the late 60s and the honeymoon bed in in 1969 in Amsterdam and then later on in Montreal, has been an advocate for peace. This child who grew up and knew war in her own country, knew war, knew hate, knew, understood what it was to be a defenseless person in the middle of a conflict, has spent decades of her life, six decades of her life, nearly six decades of her life, as a peace activist. And that statement, war is over if you want it, is very much a statement that goes with grapefruit. It's very much a statement that is a koan. If you want it, it can be over. And that is what I would like to leave you with having contemplate to contemplate because I think that because that is the point of this book. It is the kind of book that you can pick in 
and out and dip. You don't have to read this thing cover to cover. It's more of a open it up, look at it. I would encourage you to look into the work of Yoko Ono because independent of her third husband, she is a fascinating person. And more to the point, at this time, especially since we're moving towards the Christmas season, be a good time to think about the fact that war is over if you want it. So that's Grapefruit, Yoko Ono. Keep the comments respectful, and I'll see you again next time. Peace and love, guys. Peace and love. If you would like to support this channel, come across to the Black Hockey Press website, www.blackhockeypress.com.au, where you will find books and other writing services to help with your writing.